Hello. Uh, welcome, everyone, to this Guava webinar. It's uh, Archiving Imperatives for Education. My name is Sheldon Mills. I'm a marketing manager here at Guava, and I'm here with Q Mangus, the director of product marketing here at Guava. I just want to start off by thanking everyone for attending this webinar and hope you'll benefit from all the information we have to share with you today. We're going to have a, a Q&A session addressing some of the, the frequent questions we receive about archiving, best practices, retain, especially as it pertains to educational organizations, schools, districts, um, higher education. So I'll be asking the questions and Q will be answering them. We have a number of questions and topics we want to get through. However, if you have any of your own questions as we go through the webinar, please share them with us in the Q&A or the chat panel, and Q will be sure to address those. Um, Q. Thanks, everyone, for being here. We're really excited to bring you this topic and uh, hope you can benefit from it. And like Sheldon said, if you have questions, please put those through in the chat and Q&A, and we'll, and we'll address those as we go through. Um, and, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Great. So just so you know, we're going to start off a little bit on archiving in general and the, and the need and the why and about archiving. And then we'll go into retain and can answer questions all about that. But uh, should we just get started? Sounds great. Okay, let's jump right in then. So first question we have, uh, we get this a lot, like why do I need to archive and what are the reasons for doing so? Yeah, I think you're right, Sheldon. That's the kind of the basis of everything, right? A lot of people ask us, you know, why should they be archiving? Um, what are some reasons for it? And I'm gonna, you know, for education, it's really there's a really big um, reason. There's a big push, and that is that you know it's 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 unique. The education uh, industry is unique in the sense that you're dealing with students, whether that's uh, elementary or secondary ed or or um, you know, anything K through 12 or college level, you're dealing with students. And so that really changes the way that you have to have oversight on things, right? Because as you know, that um, schools have changed a lot, right? There's there's so many issues when it comes to cyberbullying and harassment. Um, there's dangerous situations that can happen. There's violent behavior. Um, and here's just some stats that, from a, a recent survey about where people who have or excuse me, the way things have changed when it comes to bullying because of uh, electronic communication, because of the way that it's so easy to talk and to people and how that bullying has now moved online. And so um, you have some here that one in three kids have been threatened online. Um, there's three million people that are absent, children that are absent because of bullying. This is through K, for K through 12, by the way. 42% um, of teenagers with text access have been cyber bullied. Um, so... The idea here with archiving, this is one part of it, is that you need to be able to have oversight on communication, on social media, on uh, mobile. And so that's the big part of it is to t try and avoid these kind of situations, you know, learn from what has happened in the past, get insights into what people are sharing and doing online. Um, and archiving, the right archiving solution can help you with that. So really that's the big thing is protecting your students and staff um, from these kind of situations. And archiving is one tool that can help you with that. Um, some other things that have to do with, with archiving, the reason to do it, this is a little bit more general, why companies in general should do it, but um, there is this idea of e-discovery, right? That you and, and schools can, because they're in the public sector, especially public schools, I should say, are subject to other laws and things. We'll touch on that as well, but um, you are more than likely going to be involved in some kind of litigation, your school is, um, for whatever the reason may be. There's a myriad of reasons why there could be um, litigation, why you could be end up in court. And so... Um, as you can see here, about 46% of organizations that have had an e-discovery request in the past 12 months. So many organizations deal with e-discovery, so you need to be prepared for that. And, and the right archiving solution can help you be ready in case of e-discovery. And then here's another one here that kind of goes along with that, is that um, about 75% of global companies will be involved in legal or regulatory action um, by the end of the year. Um, so once again, there's a very good chance that you could be involved in some sort of legal um, 
in some kind of court case and archiving can help you be prepared for that so that is the why um, the why behind archiving is uh, one protection that's the biggest thing is to be able to have information at your fingertips as to what has been communicated and how it's been communicated between students staff um, and then even just outside with parents and and um, and then you can monitor and, and view what's going on in social on your social media accounts so protection is the biggest one and then the next one is being prepared for litigation um, and then we'll touch on uh, the next one here Right. <laughs> just, what regulations, specifically for education, uh, affect you know what what my school or district need to organize or need to need to archive? So yeah, I realized I jumped the gun a little here by going to the next slide. But yes, that is the next question. Is yeah, what regulations can can uh, affect what you are archive and how you archive it? So that so going back, right? I said protection and and litigation are a couple of reasons why. Um, one other thing I did fail to mention is also just managing your data, right? Being able to see what's going on and being able to um, view that quickly and easily is really important for archiving. But then moving on to, to regulations, you've got this idea here that uh, educational organizations, especially uh, public education, is really subject to a lot of regulations. And the biggest one is the, the Freedom of Information Act along with the state sunshine laws. And that's really that um, as a public entity, um, anybody, any citizen has the right to request uh, records and this is enforceable in court. So, um, you know, there's a chance that, that a parent or a student or someone else may come to your school or your district or your university and, and ask you for information that you have to provide. And so um, that regulation with the Freedom of Information Act and the state sunshine laws both uh, push you <laughs> towards something meaning that you need to be able to have the ability to produce things if you get those kind of requests. And then another one is, is FERPA. And, you know, being in education, you're probably all aware of this, but this is really a, a around the, the protection of privacy of student education records. Um, and it also gives parents the right to inspect and review student education records. So where this applies when it comes to archiving um, and electronic communication is that... Um, your teachers and staff could be communicating these records um, via email or social media or mobile and the, and you need to be able to prove that they aren't and um, or if they are you need to have record of that and so FERPA applies and you know you need to be able to archive to be able to comply with that so really those are the big ones right the, the Freedom of Information Act and the state centralizer is what can really get you you need to make sure you have archiving to be prepared for that and then of course FERPA to make sure that everyone is uh, the privacy of your student education records are are there um, so yeah that's regulations awesome so this brings us to the crux after regulations and all the reasons why what should a school or district or university be archiving so this is this is interesting um, yes <laughs> what should you be archiving that is the thing you need to be archiving all of your email and social media and mobile communication um, those are the things where your employees the staff are communicating um, and especially when it comes to social media and mobile, uh, those are areas that are new ways of communicating. And so that really needs to be archived and readily accessible. So just remember that if, if, you're, if your staff, your students, and your faculty and teachers have email accounts, you need to be archiving those. If they have social media accounts that they're using for school purposes, um, and especially your school social media account that needs to be archived and of course mobile communication if if your staff is using mobile devices to communicate in an offic in official way that needs to be archived as well and those and that data needs to be readily accessible and what's interesting is that um, it's not happening 
<laughs> even though you should be doing this, most people are archiving email, and I would imagine that most of the people on this call are archiving email. Um, not many are archiving files. Um, very few are archiving instant messaging, and then it gets even lower as it comes to uh, social media and, and mobile communication. So what does that mean? It means that you're probably not archiving everything that you should be, and uh, yeah, there needs to be a change. Let's see. When it comes to email, uh, what should be archiving? Like calendars, attachments, folders? I mean, when you say archiving email, what does that mean, really? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we'll just stay on this slide here. So with email archiving, since we know that that's the biggest one, right, that everyone's working on, um, it's not just about the email messages, right? Obviously, that needs to be archived. But um, as the question was asked, is should you be archiving calendar attachments, folders, appointments? The answer is yes. <laughs> All of that. So anything that's in your email system. So think about it this way. If you communicate via email, send those emails out, all the attachments that are with those, those need to be archived and they need to be indexed and readily accessible. Um, appointments need to be archived. Um, so you can go back and see what has been placed on calendars and whatnot. Notes should be archived. Tasks that are assigned should be archived. Um, the folders need to be archived as well and everything that's in those folders. So the, the easy thing to, to remember is that if it's in your email system, so say you're using Exchange, for example, and if it's in your Outlook system and you're using that Outlook system to do it, so say that's posting an appointment or placing a note or, an, or a, um, a task, then it needs to be archived. Sorry, just realized I was on mute. <laughs> so that brings me to mobile and social media. Let's do mobile first, actually. Um, we do need to archive mobile, but do you have any advice for how to do that, especially when it comes to BYOD, bring your own device? So I would imagine that most of the people on this call, because it's, it's pretty common, that that's what they're dealing with the most, right? That you're dealing with people bringing their own device to work and wanting to access email or access the network or communicate via text messages with um, other staff or maybe even with students, depending on what kind of... Uh, uh, school you are and so yeah we know that mobile devices are everywhere but as we stated earlier mobile communication needs to be viewed the same as email or social media so what you need to start with and the basis of all this is you need to have a policy for mobile communication that's the advice I'd give everybody uh, you need to have a policy that clearly states what is and is not appropriate use for mobile for mobile so if your school says it's okay to text parents, you need to make sure that that is in the policy. Um, if they say you no know texting students, same thing. I'm not going to tell you what your policy needs to be, but I need, but I do want to say you need one. You need a policy. You need to get buy-off from the different people within your school. So uh, administration needs buy-off. The teachers need buy-off. IT, of course, needs buy-off. Everybody needs to come to the table and say, this is what our policy needs to be. And then th there's probably a good chance that you want to be able to have an opt-in or an opt-out, right? So if they don't want their messages archived, they need to be able to say, I don't want them archived, which means that they can't communicate that way. So it's it's the idea is is that policy needs to clearly state what they can do and what that ramifications are of that. So if you're going to be archiving mobile communication, which you should be, you need to make sure that your policy states that they're that you're going to be doing that. And so if your school is issuing mobile devices to your staff, then that's really easy, right? Because now it's it's it's, it's owned by the school. Um, you have tons of control over that device. You can mandate exactly what they can and can't do on there. But if your staff, students, teachers, et cetera, is, are bringing their own devices and want to be able to use that device to communicate um, with, you know, in an official way, in a school 
sponsored or school sanctioned way, there needs to be oversight over those communication, um, those communications. And so the idea there is that it's important, it's important, and I would give advice to have a dual persona. And when we get into retain, I'll talk about that, but you really need to be able to have something where personal stays personal and uh, official communication is official. So school-related communications are stay school-related and the personal stays separate. And then all the school-related communication is archived. And that's the best way to do it with BYOD so that your users can come in, they can access the network, access email, and they communicate officially with their mobile devices. Um, if they're bringing their own device, they can do that with the... With the um, setup that you give them with this dual persona with the official school way of communicating so that's my advice with mobile archiving you need to make sure that there's a policy first and foremost everyone needs to know what the policy says and be trained on it and they need to sign off on it then you need to have oversight of those communications by archiving them and the way that that archiving looks depends on what the device is so corporate versus BYOD um, like I said, BYOD, the best thing to do would be to have a solution where they have dual persona, and I'll, and I'll touch on what those solutions are a little later on. Great. So let's, let's flip to social media. Um, a lot of people ask, should they allow their students or faculty, staff to access social media on the school network? And then what do you do about the, the school's official social media accounts? And can you, can you actually archive and monitor something as personal as a social media of students. So that's, once again, we'll go back to this, that um, the key to this, again, is a policy, right? You need to have a social media policy, and probably a good thing would be to have both, right? Or maybe even just a communication policy that, that entails email, social media, and mobile communication, and it just outlines what's appropriate and what isn't appropriate. So that's, once again, I'm going to harp on that a lot, but the, the biggest thing to do is to start with that, that policy. So once again, with social media, there needs to be a policy. What can your staff and students access um, when they're at school? That's the big thing, is to have that policy. Then the idea with archiving is you need to be able to have oversight, especially on school social media accounts. So if you have an account that's for your official, that's for your school, your official school account, you need to be able to archive everything that's said there, everything that's posted to that account. So let's give the example of Facebook. All pictures that are posted there, all videos, all uh, comments, all postings need to be archived. So, and then there needs to be alerts in place. So if you have a school social media account and someone has posted something to your account that's inappropriate, you need to be able to have an alert that will tell you that that has happened. Um, so you need to make sure to have alerts for keywords, questions, and personal identifiable info. Like we talked about before about FERPA. This is a big one, right? You need to have those alerts in place so that if somebody is posting something that, that, can, uh, that shouldn't be on there that it'll identify as personal information, uh, you need to be able to have an alert for that. So that's a big part of this as well. So your school social media account needs to be monitored and archived, and you need to have those alerts. Um, and then if staff are using, if they have social media accounts that are being used for, once again, for official school business, that needs to be archived. You need to be able to have oversight on that. Um, and then the other idea, and you could go so far as doing this, now this is something that, once again, this is a determined school by school, is you could potentially go as far as to archive all social media accounts for all the students um, and staff, even if it's not official. And if you did that, that's a good way to prevent cyberbullying and inappropriate content, right? Because now there's that oversight on that. So. This gets into a gray area and an area that can cause problems because like the question was asked is, can you monitor and archive something as personal as social media? And the answer is uh, yes, with permission. So if you want to go that far, and some schools do, um, on having oversight of everything that's done on social media, uh, the there are solutions out there to allow you to do that. And of course, we will talk about the solution that we have for doing that, but you need to make sure that the policy um, 
outlines that. So if you want to go so far as to archive all social media accounts of all your staff, students, etc., cetera, um, you can. You just need to make sure that that policy states it and they buy off on it. Um, and that's going to be the most effective way to prevent cyberbullying and, and inappropriate content is by archiving it all and having those alerts in place. Um, however, at the bare minimum, you need to be doing the school social media account and any staff social media that, that is being used for official business. One final thing on the policy, make sure, like I said before, it needs to be clear, it needs to outline it, but then you need to have technology to validate that policy. And of course, we'll talk about that, but that's the big thing. Have the policy and then have t technology to validate the policy. Well, let's just jump right into that um, and how Retain can do that. Uh, let's start with how Retain is different from other archiving solutions and how Retain can help with with these requirements, you know, these that we have for archiving? Great, good questions. Um, so here we have what makes Retain Unified Archiving different. The idea with Retain and where it is a different solution is that you have an one central archive for all email, so multi-platform email, social media, and mobile communication. All of that is in one central archive. So everything we've been talking about, Retain archives it and puts it into a central archive. Then in that central archive, um, end users have the ability to access their, their personal archive. So any of your st students, if you're archiving it, can access their archive. And of course, your teachers and staff can access their personal archive. So, and what's cool too is that when it comes to email, it, it replicates the folder structure so it looks like their email clients. So when they go in there, it looks familiar. Um, and then with social media, they can browse all their social media accounts that are being archived and they can do a search of the entire archive. Um, an end user can search their own personal archive, but then of course administrators and other named users can access the entire archive and do one search and get all search results. Um, some other things just to um, take note of is that there's built-in e-discovery and case management tools. So as we talked about the the need for e-discovery and being prepared for litigation, Retain actually comes included with those things. You don't have to worry about getting another tool there. And there's also redaction. So of course, you know, with, with FOIA and FERPA, as we were talking about, there are things that should not be included in, an, in a FOIA request or an e-discovery request. Those need to be redacted and not be part of the public record. So um, Retain has the ability to redact that. And then there's the ability to tag uh, messages. So if you, so let's go back to the the case when it comes to cyberbullying. If something is archived in there and you can see that it has to do with bullying, you could tag that, and then you can go back easily and find all of those messages that have to do with bullying and take action on those. And so there's the ab ability to have a smart, confidential, and rule-based tagging. So. Um, you have the ability to, t to build tags based on rules that you set. You can have confidential tags that only those who have created the tags um, see. And then there's smart tags. So you could actually create a rule so that as messages are coming in, if it cert meets certain criteria, it will automatically be tagged. So um, let's take, for example, if you're going to tag anything that has to do with maybe uh, people communicating uh, test scores, right? And you want to be able to see everything that has uh, been communicated with test scores to see how, if your uh, student, or excuse me, if your staff and teachers are communicating the way that you want it to be communicated. You could create a rule so that all messages that have to do with staff scores are automatically tagged and you can go back and search those tags easily. And then, of course, Retain helps with. Um, compliance with these regulations by in the ways that we talked about, um, meaning that you have the ability to archive everything in the central location. You have easily easy and immediate access to those messages, and um, you have the ability to have redaction in those e-discovery tools to make sure that you're complying with the with FOIA requests and, and FERPA to make sure that private data stays private. Can you go into specifics, like what, what does retain archive, meaning email, social media, mobile, what can Retain do for that, all those? Perfect. So yes, what does Retain archive? So first, so this is the big overview of Retain. So I touched on that a little bit, but this we'll go into a little bit more detail. So Retain archives mobile communication. 
So there's, uh, and this is going to be high level. We can go into the details of it. I think there's other questions that deal with this. But high level, it archives iOS, Android, and BlackBerry for mobile communication. So if your users, your students or staff are using any of those communicate any of those devices for communicating, uh, Retain will archive that. Then for email, it archives Exchange, GroupWise, Office 365, and Gmail, and it will archive email, attachments, appointments, everything that goes along with, with those email systems. Then for social media, there's some really cool things that it does. Retain archives Facebook, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, and Flickr. So those social media accounts all you know, all the comments, the posts, the the pictures, those are all archived. And then for Facebook, or excuse me, for YouTube and Vimeo in particular, um, retain archives the videos and the comments to those videos as well. And so this is on the high level what retain archives, and that's the mobile, the email, and the social media. Um, and all the so once again the email all the email appointments and attachments for social media all the comments posts um, chats between them so the instant messaging like Facebook Messenger those type of things are all archived and then of course for YouTube and Vimeo the actual videos are archived along with any comments or um, items related to those videos. Awesome. So let's jump into uh, email just for a minute here and how does Retain work with Office 365, Exchange, Gmail, GroupWise. Can you give us a little more detail on that? Absolutely. So um, so the email side of it, I touched a little bit about the platforms. What's great is that it is Retain can actually support multiple platforms. So if you're running an Exchange and Gmail, which is pretty common for universities, you can actually archive both. And it looks the same meaning that when you search it, it's going to look the same. You'll be able to find everything from one central archive. Um, and then uh, in particular, the details of that are with Exchange uh, and Office 365. Retain goes directly to the Exchange or Office 365 system. So what it does is it ties to the system, and you can use um, really one of three ways to archive it. The first one that's pretty common is through journaling. Um, so you could use the journal and be able to archive everything that goes to the journaling inbox and then that will be pulled into retain. Uh, the other one you can use is impersonation. So um, retain will you, via impersonation will go in there and it looks like it's a, the actual person exchange thinks that it's that person and, and retain will actually pull those messages down. Um, but it's a direct integration. And then there's also, um, for those of you who are familiar with exchange in Office 365, there's um, the, uh, it's called the micro Microsoft Recoverable Items folder. So Retain can actually take advantage of that to have that granular archiving by pulling everything from that Recoverable Items folder right into Retain. So there's a th there's three ways really to do that with uh, Exchange and Office 365 in particular, but know that it's tied directly and that everything comes over. Um, and then with GroupWise, it's a similar thing. It ties directly to the GroupWise server. And then with Gmail, um, it ties directly to the, the Gmail system um, and pulls everything down um, into the system. It's not like a, um, a forwarding type thing. It's actually it's an actual connection into Gmail um, to be able to pull everything down. And um, those are each different modules that you can implement depending on what you need. And then it supports that mixed environment. And then, of course, as we talked about before, um, you have the ability to perform e-discovery and publish. Um, there's a, d a few different options for accessing the archive. Users can access it via a plugin, an email plugin for either uh, Outlook or GroupWise. Um, they can access it via the Web Access Archive Viewer. Um, and the, this goes for users or administrators. And then they also, there's also an offline archive viewer that we have so that they can view it there. And then finally, there's an ability that you have to export everything to a standalone archive viewer that's a fully indexed file um, that has all the all the emails from a search or from a subset of the archive that can be now placed onto a portable media like a jump drive or a DVD and given to an outside team. And then, of course, you can also export to PDF if needs be. So that's really how Retain supports email, is that it ties with those email systems, it archives everything in, it's easily accessible, and you can search those messages right from there. 
Awesome. I have a question about, uh, well, let's do e-discovery first, actually, and how uh, retain, can you give some more examples, on, or, or not more examples, but go into more detail on, on just what retain can do for, you know, whether it's a request for e any type of e-discovery. Good. So, um, oh, and I did forget to show you this. This is the example of the Outlook plugin or the email plugin. Um, so an, a user can access it directly from the Outlook um, and really seamless to be able to get to that archive. And then, of course, they can uh, cache messages for offline use as well. And then uh, when talking about eDiscovery, I just wanted to show this slide. Here's an example of an email system that has been archived and how, you know, as I stated before, the, the folders and the, and the messages in those folders are replicated over, so it looks familiar to a user. But then from here, um, you can place, an administrator can place litigation holds. So if there are messages that are, that are involved in eDiscovery, you can place a hold on that. Um, you can, like we said before, you can tag them and you can export them from here. And then there are uh, great search tools as well. So uh, this example here is the example of the retained search. So what's great with the retained search tool is that you can actually, uh, as you start to type in there, once you get to past three letters, it's going to now auto-suggest things that are in the archive. So if you're looking for a term and you don't know exactly what that term can, is, it's going to auto-suggest some of the things that are in the archive already. And then, uh, as you can see, the, those items are highlighted in, within the search results. So what's great is that with eDiscovery, if, you're, if you have to go back and search and find something that, that pertains to um, litigation or even a, a FOIA information request, you can go in there, you can start typing that in, and the results will appear quickly. Um, you can and you'll see all the electronic communication in one central archive, meaning the email, the social media, the mobile communication. It's all going to pull in into one uh, location, one search to search everything. Then you can specify the scope and specify where to search in. And what's great from here is that now you can... Um, export that to a PDF to be ready for the court case. You can export that to the standalone archive viewer, and then from there you can redact items and uh, export again with the items taken out that don't need to be in part of that request. Um, and so that's the idea, is that you have the ability to search, you have the ability to place litigation holds, they have the ability to export and prepare for, uh, for your requests or litigation and um, you have that ability to tag and be ready in case of, uh, of e-discovery or litigation. So uh, let's let's tap on uh, Google real quick here because <laughs> I know that let's see that some uh, so for schools right um, if you can get archiving for free through Google Apps for Education, why why retain? How what what can retain offer? Yeah, this this gets asked a lot because we know that there's a, a great solution out there um, that Google offers, and that's Google Apps for Education, right? And um, and many schools are probably using this because uh, Google is offering that for free for uh, public education, right? And uh, not-for-profit schools. So, and with included in, in uh, Google Apps for Education, if you didn't know, is Google Vault Archiving. They include that. Um, and so what Google Vault Archiving has right off the bat is email archiving, legal holds, search, export, and audit reports. So that's really what Google Vault has. Um, so... Yeah, if you're using Google Apps for Education, that is included. However, the one thing to take note of is that Google Vault isn't going to quite give you the, the um, solution that you need to be able to be fully prepared. And so just some of the things that Google Vault is missing is, one, the ability to archive all your electronic communication. Really, all Google Vault is for is for archiving uh, Gmail. So it'll archive the Gmail messages. But as we've touched on a lot here, you need to be archiving more than just that. You need to be archiving um, your social media, your mobile communication. Um, 
Next, you have this e-discovery. The e-discovery tools, Google Vault, um, we've heard many stories about how people have a hard time performing e-discovery. They just don't have the tools, or the, excuse me, the solution just doesn't have the tools to be able to place those litigation holds, to be able to easily access that information. And one thing that's really difficult is there's no way to export, and that's a, another bullet here, export to PDF, right? So now that you have the information, in Vault, how do you get it out to be prepared for an e-discovery request, to be prepared for a FOIA request? Um, we can scratch number three because for, uh, that doesn't pertain to the free edition, but um, the other thing you have is, is dead costs, and that means that um, when, when somebody leaves the organization, you have to um, if you want to continue to archive them in Google Vault, you have to continue that license going. Now, not as important for education because it's free, but that is just one more thing that you have to worry about. Meaning there's, it's not as important for cost, but it's just one more thing to worry about is having that license in Google, in Google Apps for Education has to stay in there if you want it to continue to be archived. And that's a big thing because for uh, in a lot of the situations, you need to be able to have your email archive for a number of years. So that could be diff difficult if you have staff that's coming and going. Another thing is that it's only in the cloud and, and some schools and other organizations may uh, prefer to have something that is on premise. Um, then there's a lack of archiving control, meaning that you don't know where it's stored. So that could be a problem depending on your school and district, what your guidelines are, is uh, Google doesn't guarantee where your information is going to be stored. Um, and then if you have multiple email addresses for each user, and I know this is pretty common in schools, right, that you could have one, you know, if uh, maybe a, a teacher has a, uh, an email address for a certain subject that they teach and another one for another, um, Google Vault won't support those multiple email addresses per user. It's going to have to be something where they go into a separate, a separate view to view each separate item. We talked about exporting, uh, exporting is difficult, and then of course the message restore is the big thing, right? Is that with Google Vault, you can't take a message from Google Vault and um, restore it back to Gmail directly. There's a huge process that's just way over the top. Um, you have to export it to Mbox, and then you have to use something to convert it from Mbox to a PST, and then you have to use a PST importer to import it back to Google Vault. Needless to say, it's difficult. <laughs> and so um, that's a deficiency there as well. And so with all that being said, yes, it's free. Um, but sometimes the old adage of you get what you pay for applies. You don't have the things that you need to really make it a true archive. And um, I mean, really, a lot of organizations, the, the e-discovery piece is a deal breaker. And then, of course, the message re restore is a big problem, too, because how many times do you have a, a, a teacher delete an email on accident and want that back in their inbox? And uh, yeah. Google Vault doesn't give you an easy ability to do that. And of course, Retain uh, solves these things, right? As we've talked about, there is a unified archive. There is e-discovery tools. Um, if, there's, uh, if it's archived in Retain, you don't have to have a license of Google Vault. It'll still be in that Retain archive, um, whether or not there's, there's a Google Vault, or excuse me, a Google uh, Gmail or a Google Apps uh, license, it doesn't matter. It's still going to be archived in Retain. And then, of course, with Retain, you have full control over your archive. You know where it's stored. If you're using an on-prem version of Retain, you know that it's right there. If you're using a cloud version, we will let you know where your data is. It's all geographically strategic, so depending on where you are, it's going to be uh, archived in an area that's close to you and, and meets the requirements that you have. There is support for multiple email addresses. You can export to all those things that I talked about earlier, and you can restore directly to the email inbox. So if you have something in Retain and you want to restore that to Gmail, it's really easy. You select the message, hit restore, it goes right back. Um, yeah, and then, of course, as we talked about, it's, it's an archive of all email, social media, and mobile communication. Thank you. That is very thorough. Um, <laughs> Let's hit on uh, Office 365 real quick and how uh, Retain compares to some options are out there, not for, for most, but for Office 365. At some levels, archiving can be included as well. Absolutely. So the Office, Office 365, um, 
To be able to archive, you need an enterprise E3 plan or higher. So that's something to, to consider. If you're using Office 365 just for the email portion um, and you need archiving, you know, an E3 plan is a much higher plan. <laughs> so that's something to um, be aware of. And then, of course, uh, the support for social media and mobile, of course, uh, Office 365, once again, similar to Google Vault, it only archives Office 365 email. Um, and these things apply as well to exchange in place archiving, so very similar um, ideas. So when I talk about that, just be aware that that also applies. Um, there is no data redaction. Um, so with Office 365, you don't have the ability to redact. There are some great uh, e-discovery tools. I, we can say that, and uh, Microsoft has come a long way with that. But one thing they're really missing is that redaction. And then, of course, um, the multi-platform email integration. They, once again, as I stated, it only archives Office 365, or if it's Exchange, it only archives Exchange. And then you don't have access to your social mobile or email in one central archive. So um, once again, it's just archiving the email. So if you have to archive social media and mobile, you're going to have to use a separate solution. And so it's not going to be a unified archive. Um, another thing that's really interesting is that the Office 365 archive can't be accessed offline. So if you have users that on occasion are, um, are wanting to access things offline, they can't do that with Office 365. Um, and then the migration path can be difficult um, when it comes to if something is in Office 365, getting it out of there and into something else is, is difficult. So, And as we know, uh, it's pretty common to move email systems, right? And so if you're ever moving from Office 365, say, to Gmail or, or some other solution, the migration out of there is difficult. Um, and that's where, of course, once again, Retain solves these problems in the sense that there is multi-platform email uh, integration. You do have access to all of those other um, electronic communication data in one central location. And then migration is easy because it's a, a platform agnostic format in Retain. And so it doesn't matter the platform. Uh, you can move from one to the other, and it's going to be there stored in, in, in Retain. Social media now. Again, just want to, if anybody has any questions specific to any section we're, we're going over, please put that in the chat in the Q&A. But social media, how does Retain, or what does Retain do with social media? And then, yeah, can you give some, yeah, social media. Let's do social media first. Okay, perfect. So with Retain Social, um, what it does is it captures pictures, videos, GIFs and other data formats that are common to social media. Um, and I touched on that a little bit, but just as a review, yeah, YouTube and Vimeo, it's videos that are that are actually archived. And then with everything else, it's everything that's that pertains there. And then there's um, some things I didn't talk about is that um, there's alerts for keywords, questions, and personal identifiable, in, identifiable info. So we talked about the need to have that. Well, Retain has that in there. So as things are archived, um, you'll get an alert. So if there's a keyword that you wanted to look at, you can get an alert saying, hey, this, uh, say it's something about violence violence or violent behavior, you can get an alert saying, hey, this has been communicated. And what's great is that Retain has the ability to archive uh, continuously social media. So as, as it's posted, um, it can be archived right instantaneously. So in a sense, it's almost a real-time monitoring because as it's archived, you have this ability to uh, have a keyword that comes up and says this and is alerted to whomever you choose of something that has been posted. Or if there's a question that goes to your uh, social media account, you're going to get a notification of that. And then, of course, notification of personal identifiable info. So the, the, the solution that we talked about before, Retain, gives you the ability to do that. Um, also, what's great is you can connect to all of these social media accounts that we talked about without login info. All you have to do is, um, so let's say in the case of a school social media account, all you have to do is be logged into that account and then um, just click on authorize retain social and now retain social will be authorized because you're already logged into that and it will start archiving. Then if it comes to school excuse me, if it comes to students or staff, if you want to archive those, all, once again, all they have to do is be logged into that. Click on the, the link that you give them um, for archiving. It'll authenticate 
because they're logged in and then, then it will start to archive everything from there and so that applies to on and off the network so if they're um, posting social media things and they're using their phone and they're using their data plan um, retain social will be able to archive that without having them to be on your network um, and then if they're if um, things are being posted to your school social media account um, from anywhere, you're going to be able to archive that as well. And then all those messages are archived into that central archive that you can then search um, and perform e-discovery as we talked about. And then so here's just a view of kind of the idea there, right? So all these uh, messages are, are um, authenticated excuse me, all these platforms are authenticated and we've partnered with a company called Archive Social, um, then those things are pulled in via Archive Social into the Retain Archive, then you can access that Retain Archive uh, from the different ways that we talked about accessing it. Here's a view of a search to be able to search um, specifically for these platforms and the content. And then here's a view of connecting to the different accounts and how you could connect a Facebook, a Twitter, et cetera, account um, to tie directly to um, those accounts and pull them in without having to have the login credentials. And now everything is archived in Retain and you have the, that ability to monitor and, and archive uh, social media. So, social media, let's go to mobile mobile devices real quick. Uh, how does Retain work with, with, with mobile devices? And uh, one question we, we sometimes get is if someone has multiple device, mobile devices, how does Retain work with that? So Retain Mobile, I touched on that a little bit, is the supported platforms of Android, BlackBerry, and iOS. So it's a little different for each one. Um, so for BlackBerry in particular, um, Retain integrates with the BlackBerry Enterprise Service to be able to archive all SMS, MMS, phone call logs, BBM, and PIN messages. And this, of course, is generally how somebody would go about it if it's a corporate-owned device or a school-owned device. And so if you have Blackberries that you're issuing, um, it's going to work really well because it archives everything on that Blackberry and you can lock it down. Um, now, for Android and iOS, there's a couple of options. For Android, especially if it's a, it's a school-owned device, there's an option of just archiving everything. So it's going to archive all SMS, MMS, and phone call logs, so all the text messages and phone call logs that are native to the Android device. Um, that's the way that Retain does it uh, natively, is to archive everything off of that phone. And so, once again, this is really the best practice for a corporate device, or excuse me, or a school-owned device, is to be able to archive everything off of that Android device. But when it comes to BYOD, there's going to be two ways in, that we suggest and retain works to be able to help you with BYOD. Uh, first and foremost is we partner with a company called Celltrust. And what Celltrust can do is it can actually work so that you place a separate, there's an app that's placed on each phone, on each iOS or Android device. And this app assigns a separate phone number to that phone, separate mobile number, so that now um, your staff or teachers can call via that separate number on their mobile device and it's separate from the personal information so that the phone call logs and then they can also text via that separate number and the texts are all secure and encrypted so if it's going from one cell trust user to another cell trust user it's, it's encrypted end to end and then um, if it's texted outside of that it's encrypted up until the point it hits the carrier but then all of those communications are separate from personal so all the personal stays uh, separate. They can still call using the native stuff. They can still text using iMessage or other uh, Android Messenger apps, um, and that's going to stay personal. But all of the uh, school officials sanctioned communication is done through the Cell Trust app, and then of course it's all archived in Retain, and you have oversight of all those communication that are done via Cell Trust, and you can search, and it's all in that central archive. Another suggestion that we have is through BBM Protected. Now, this is just for uh, text messages, and so this gives you an end-to-end -end encryption. So if you want to be able to allow um, your teachers to communicate with other staff or with students, you can install uh, BBM Protected on the phone, and then the other user can install that BBM Protected, and they communicate that way. And then um, 
retain. And, the, and BBM Protected works with any of these devices, iOS, Android, or BlackBerry, and then Retain integrates directly with the BBM protected app and pulls those messages down. Um, so that's how it works with mobile, and that's the support there. You have the ability to have those those uh, separate things that keep school communications separate from personal for if your uh, staff or teachers are bringing their own device. Oh, and then, and then with multiple devices, uh, I missed that part, but uh, here's an example of the search as well. With multiple devices, um, it, the way that Retain works pricing-wise is it is priced on the mobile side per device, but um, the devices are authenticated to a user. And so um, a, mo a user can have as many devices as they want or need, and it's going to be tied back to that user. And so they'll be able to see that in their personal archive, and you'll be able to search that and know that that, is, that pertains to that person. Let me double check questions real quick. Um, so I guess this, this brings us, so what are my next steps? Um, what's, the, well, what's the takeaway here? So yeah, just to kind of sum everything up, I know we've gotten a lot of information. We've got almost an hour. Thanks everyone for being here and for sticking with us. Just rem remember you need to archive communication. It gives protection for your school. It lets you manage your data. We didn't touch a lot on that, but you can manage your data. You can free up your email systems to work more efficiently because it does, those messages don't have to be on the email system. They can be in the archive. Um, you have that oversight of all communication, um, and you can protect your school. That's the big thing. You can have protection of your school. You can ensure regulation compliance and um, so that's why you should be archiving, and Retain is the tool to be able to archive and monitor and discover your communication. And so that's the takeaway. You need to archive, and Retain is the best solution out there to be able to do that. And so your next steps are, you know, get a demo. Get a personalized demo of how it's going to work for you, or get a product quote and see how, how the pricing is going to work for you and, and uh, see how that's going to work. Uh, learn more about it at uh, guava.com slash retain. And then, of course, you can also check us out on YouTube and view other resources and this webinar as well, which will be recorded, which is uh, youtube.com slash guava TV. So those are the next steps. Learn more about it. Um, get a quote. Um, get a demo and see how you can start protecting your school today. So, just as a reminder as well, this webinar was recorded, and everyone will get the, the, a link to the webinar that you can share or go back for anything you might have missed. And just want to encourage everyone, like Q said, to visit us at guava.com or our YouTube channel for more webinars and videos. And thank you so much for participating today, and I hope to see you next time.